Wasabi. Okay, I think we have everyone we need to have. Uh, let me see, did I share that screen? Yeah. Um, so, hello. I guess, is this, we were, we met last week, right? Not we, and then we were had a gap a couple, a little while. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, did we make any progress on Looks like we made some progress on this change request, this pull request about some good known values. Do I shall I go to the files change, Dave? Say again. Uh, sure, I reviewed it yesterday, and I think a bunch of it is on the right track, but I think it needs some changes. Can you hear me okay? My audio doing okay? One. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thanks, Elliot. Do you, do you want to go through this now, Lawrence? All right, let me ask if we agree that known good value has one one hyphen and not two. Known good is the adjective, value is the noun. That was my rationale for it not having a hyphen. I would have thought. Wait, what was that, Lawrence? Uh, don't you hyphen, don't you hyphenate to put the adjective with the noun to make a new noun? No. Yeah. Well, why are you trying to make a new noun? I think it's sufficient to have an adjective and a noun. Okay, let's declare this bike shedding. Mm -hmm. Right. I think trying to invent a new noun is what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to invent new nouns. That's not what my main feedback is, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I thought that was a low-hanging fruit, so obviously not. <laughs> I don't want to invent new terms to go with the terminology section. Layman's English, please, would, is sort of my default uh, mantra. Um, like 325 was a new line that shows up as a diff, and I don't think there's any reason for it to be a diff. Um, so that one should be easy to revert. Um, the uh, next section, uh, three, what is it, 328 to 332 is uh, confusing. Um, and so I tried to rewrite it. What's confusing is it could be read as saying it compares the claim like, you know, GPS against a hash of a file or expected hardware version, which is not the intent or what makes sense. And so I tried to rewrite it um, to uh, have more connectedness, All right? So, um, and to remove things that I thought were confusing. Now, maybe you want to add something or whatever, but uh, that's what I was trying to address in there. Uh, meaning the 330 to 332 I found to be more confusing than helpful as phrased. Uh, 
Oh, I don't have any problem with examples if it's phrased in a way that's not confusing, so. What numbers were those again? The ones that's in the center, the 328 to 332. So things like, you know, a hash of a file or, a, sorry, like an expected hardware version only makes sense to compare against for a claim that's about a hardware version, right? And that's what wasn't coming through right now. And so I at least removed 330 to 332, but it's okay to use those as an example if somehow, you know, for example, for a claim about a hardware version, it might uh, compare it against a known good hardware version. Something like that would be fine to say. But, um, I, I didn't have specific suggestion there. I just wanted to let you know what I was trying to address that I thought was easy to misread. Um, the suggested change at 336 is my m main point here, that all this discussion about no good values is just a special case. And I don't like it calling out a special case without talking about the more general case. The more general case is that you use uh, uh, parameters or values in the appraisal, and those values could be more than just known good values. They could be uh, the values to be used in a range, the values to be used as a, in a set to check membership against, the value to be used as a, the uh, exclusion range, like the time that the, the expiration time is an example. If it actually is equal to that, it's a bad value. Anything, you know, it has to be less than that as opposed to less than or equal to. And so the point is you can get values from one place and you can get the appraisal policy that consumes those values from another place. And that's the more general case that I think this needs to address. Known good values is just a special case of the more general thing, where you're, do, where you're doing an equality test as opposed to a, a membership in a set test or a range test or something else. And so the values to be used in those checks can come from a, a different place, which is what this is talking about. But known good values is just the special case where it's equality, and I wanted to generalize it. Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, I mean, you could even go so far as like uh, machine learning. Yeah, and, yeah. So, so, that's and all that's, that. so that's what I was attempting to do in 336. And I'm not sure I'm done, but that was my goal in 336 was to say, oh, yeah, that was just one example. But in general, you know, it could be membership in a set, a range of values. Now, maybe known valid, bad values is not the right term to use because you could argue that's actually a uh, an exclusion range or something like that. Because, uh, you know, it's a less than as opposed to less than or equal to so it's a value to be used in a less than so i don't know if there's a better term than known bad values i'm happy to accept a replacement wording there but I mean, that's, that's what i was trying to get at here that sentence seems fine to me maybe add another sentence that says um no bad values would be a term if it was ever po appraisal policy used like not equals yeah in some of our work we um think about the appraisal policy in terms of constraints on the claims that are being made. Yeah, I agree. That's a good way to phrase it. So uh, if somebody wants text that talks about, you know, constraints on values, I, I that would be lovely text. I'm just trying to abstract it because right now it just calls out, you know, equality and known good values and says nothing about the more general case. And so I'm just trying to argue that we need more general text, whether it's constraints or whatever. And so I took one shot at it, but I'm, there are things even in the text that I proposed that I'm not happy about. And so I would love more suggestions and work on it. So you're not arguing that you would remove the known good values, you're just arguing the generalized, that, that the known good values is an example and that we do others. That's fine. Yep, that's exactly right. Yep, that's good. I think it's like 337 is phrased as a way that's specific to known good values. And I didn't have a wording suggestion, like 337 I think needs to be rewritten to be more general too. And that's the one that says you can get them from someplace other than the appraisal policy. And the things you can get are the, you know, things to be used in those constraints. Some term like reference values be useful here, because you can use reference values to evaluate, you know, sort of arbitrary constraints. Yeah, reference values is sorry. It might be. I mean, if you think if you would still, um, I think the test to verify that that term is accurate, which it might be, is um, 
let's say you're doing a test against a membership and a set, right? As long as, you know, if the claim value was one of the following three things, like one of the following three hardware models or whatever it was, um, and you'd also use it to say, to express say a uh, expiration time. If you'd use reference values to express a re an, an expiration time and you'd use it to reference all the values in the set, then it would be a fine uh, name to use. Seems to work for me, but. No objection. I'm trying to understand, do you want me to commit this suggestion at this point, or you want to revise it in a different way? Well, committing the suggestion just adds it into the pull request, right? And so yes, I, know I, that. I mentioned yeah. that um, uh, I think it's fine to commit it, although the part that I don't like in, that, in my own suggestion is I couldn't come up with a better term than like known bad values. That phrase probably needs to be replaced with <laughs> something that explains that it's, you know, a can like uh, the thing that I had in mind was like a timestamp, although it could apply to like a not equals thing. And so rather than inventing some uh, n new term, I mean, I don't have an objection if other people like known bad values, but it could be worded better. Um, but the 337 is the one that doesn't have any, I don't, there's no suggestion there. Somebody needs to create text for that. Right. So I'm just trying to understand what we do next here. So if we merge on. this, we, so if you merge this, we create a new issue that is parent. Yeah, so we, uh, if this is merged uh, as is, uh, we have to, uh, because we're moving forward, we are not declaring victory. We are declaring uh, this is a, a midterm goal. I think, was it Peter's suggestion? Was it Peter that mentioned the, uh, was it reference values? Um, that was me, Paul. Paul, sorry, maybe 337. Could replace known good values with reference values. Yeah, there are also there are a lot of names. The, the, the reference measurements, manifests, values, known good values, uh, golden measurements sometimes, and then well, they are but, even called nominal Paul's values. Point, so yes, Paul's point is that a uh, known good value and a reference value is not the same thing, right? No good value is a subcase because a reference value could be a known bad value, right? And a known good value and a known bad value would be two different types of reference. That's value. a policy thing. It's how you interpret how the value. A, uh, the value is very known as being bad or very known um, as being good. So yeah, known as the, uh, I think, uh, whatever here. In, yeah, go ahead and click that to create a comment. And then in the leave a comment right about that, there's a little plus minus, which is the first icon on the left. It's a plus uh, minus. Yeah, right there. Thank you. Yep. And then you edit in place. Reference values was yes, a term we used before, so we kind of, I don't know, relinquish that. I'm happy with it in again, so that's okay. Well, I think in the previous uh, text in here, it was lowercase r and lowercase v. Meaning in the ones that's up uh, earlier in the same pull request. Yeah, I can't approve my own suggestion. Oh, um, you cannot? How do you not? Uh, I wonder if somebody else can. Yeah, probably somebody else can. Uh, let uh, me see if I can. Oh, it's a whole thing. Um, I'm not. I'm not concerned about this one. I think that's just a wrap. I'm not seeing your suggestion. I think you, have, I think you actually have to um, finish your review up at the top and say comment before it'll show up for anybody else. That's why it's not showing up. Ooh, now I can commit my own suggestion. There you go. Uh, you can mark my bottom comment as resolved, I think, or at least mostly resolved. That one. Say resolved. Say, yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, sorry. You're, never mind. That's not 337. 337 was automatically marked once you committed that. Yeah. My comment disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, sorry. I, I don't know what we're doing with this one either. 
you, you guys talked about this, but I didn't hear any back and forth about whether your Lawrence is, wants to rewrite this or what. Lawrence? The other fix that I saw you see in here, it used to say you compare the claims against the values. And you can see I reworded that to comparing the value of claims against the reference values. Uh, this is this uh, enrichment with, with reference values does not break the text. It might actually solve it. I don't know. Uh, actually, now that we've done the other one, I would delete known good values or because reference value, they're not alternatives, right? No good values are types of reference values. And so I would just delete uh, and say two reference values. I want to modify my own suggestion here. Mm -hmm. We've had the reference value discussion. That? I'm going to uh, add my own suggestion here and then uh, right there. And I'm going to update comment and start review. And now, if you refresh, you'll see my suggestion change. Okay, there you go. Now, this one, so the major, improve, I think I still like uh, Paul's suggestion is how to improve the text on this one even more. But uh, So Which do you want to put that in? Yeah, Paul, give me or? a minute. Give me a minute. I'll see if I can incorporate Paul's, Paul, Paul's wording. Okay, updated. This is my intent to capture Paul's intent. I like it. Why not the reference values, reference values for claims, or reference values? Uh, just bit what I get, like like in combination with policies, you know. So so the good and bad things that you were highlighting, is captured here. So you you have things, and then you have the the, 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 the basically the the should, and then you have the is, and then the in between is the policy. So that that's a very generic. Thing, right? So that is the thing we want to express, isn't it? 
Like known bad, like I said, uh, the example of a known bad value would be the expiration time, right? Once it's equal to that, it's bad, right? And so that was the, a check for being in a range bounded by reference values. And so the upper bound would be, would have been that. So, um, so I did try to encompass that idea. Um, okay. I tried not to use the term known bad values. It's actually a range check, right? <laughs> that, that, I see. That, that's okay. And then please don't. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> Blacklisted values is another term for known bad values. You can add that. That's why I said, or any other test. Hopefully, with uh, that set, you can extrapolate to you know inequality or uh, other arbitrary things that might involve you know computation. You know, is uh, you know two times the value of this claim plus that other claim less than something you know, more complex stuff. I didn't want to go into any more complex stuff, but it's in theory possible. Whether there's any practical case, I don't know. That's why I, I tried to have like an insider or something, figuring if I give three examples, you can extrapolate and, and come up with other ones yourself as the reader. I did try to use Paul's term, uh, constraint and reference value. Are you trying to avoid the use of endorsement values? Uh, yes, because we had not discussed that and we had used the term, we had suggested the term reference value. So I was trying to use just the terms that Paul was using. I think that's consistent with the where was it the suggestion earlier that the reference values could be could come from endorsements or from a parallel policy because those are the two input paths to the verifier. Right. That was exactly my intent here because the stuff about where it comes from is in a paragraph after this one that says, oh, well, those reference values could come from either of those two places. So yes, I, that's exactly what I had in mind um, to capture. So thanks. Now, maybe the other paragraph needs some uh, improvements, but that was the intent when I was writing this text. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there's a little bit of a of a um, if we don't if we we don't connect the the idea that reference values can come from endorsement. Uh, then that it, the, it's connected to policy here, but it's not connected to endorsement. Um, there was a different sentence that said that. Maybe the other sentence should be moved up closer. Um, what line was that one that had the word endorsement? Um, it's in 323 and 324. What's up above before this? So if you scroll. You want me to, is it down, you said, or you want me to go to the whole scroll, document? Scroll up. To the 323, 324. Yeah, right there. Uh, mm -hmm. the evidence appraisal policy. Oh, you're right. It doesn't have reference values in there. Okay, so we do need to connect it. This one says the appraisal policy can be obtained along with endorsements or might be obtained via some other mechanism that's being configured. And the key point here that Ned's making, I think, is that the appraisal policy might have two parts, right? The set of Conditions with variables and the value of those variables be filled in, and they can come from two different places, right? Like the appraisal policy might have, you know, if a uh, claim such and such is uh, less than expiration timestamp, the expiration timestamp might come from the endorsement. Right. And so it's like the composition of two different places, I think, is that point. I don't think it, now that I'm looking at it, this is where I thought that it was. And yes, I agree with you, Ned, that we need to say something about that. Maybe right after the paragraph that uh, we were just looking at the, that uh, I wrote would be a good place for it. Um, yeah. That's a good point. Um, I'm looking to make sure. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be the right place for it. Um, do you want me to try to author that or somebody else want to? Okay. Yeah, please try. So I'm going to edit my same suggestion, just extend that text, but I'm noticing that the uh, text that I put in in 336 to 337, which I think you already, maybe that was your text, not mine. I don't know. Anyway, I'm seeing some of that is now redundant with the text that's up higher. So we may, anyway, let me edit this and see what happens. I 
Okay. Do we capitalize appraisal policy or is that lowercase in the document? It's a it's an architectural term for technically it's appraisal policy for evidence or appraisal policy for okay. for um attest, uh, attestation results. Uh, um so that is a good point because all this text that we're reviewing right now would equally apply to the appraisal policy for uh, attestation results and things that appear in the relying party. So I'm wondering if we're over indexing on verifier here. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to at least finish this by talking about the appraisal policy for evidence and then is that something that would be across the entire maybe have a a line that's that says the previous paragraph at the relying parties your substitute or, or put you know verifier slash relying party or something in line Okay, uh, go ahead and refresh. I had a sentence to the long one that was down below. Uh, a proposal sentence at 334. It says what I think Ned just said. Yeah, so that's the sentence. Yeah, that's... buddy, happy. All right, yeah. <clears throat> Happy. And we're going to merge this text. Um, it still needs some cleanup, but if you want to merge it, and then I may do a cleanup pass afterwards. Like I mentioned, that uh, I think it over indexes on verifier. Um, there's a little bit of redundancy between the text that you just uh, committed and the line 336, and so I can see some cleanup that needs to be done. But if you want to do that in two steps, I'm okay with that. Right. Basically, means I got to remember to do that while I'm still thinking about what we just talked about. So. Uh, so looks like oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Has this one got any? Tension, Hank. Pull request okay, seventy seven. Yeah, this, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five hours ago, so, yes. I uh, uh some things I addressed, some things I commented on. So uh I think it's basically um so the the, the one line comment it is a uh, very global uh from Dave. I addressed all all mega lines and made them paragraphs with multiple lines. So that is fixed, but not commented on, I see, sorry. Um, next point was more to the detail. And uh, when I thought maybe not, I made a bigger comment about this. So probably the next one is, yeah, that's the entity discussion here. I was surprised. Um, we have uh, another discussion that is uh, basically from January where we said we should introduce the terms entity and sub-entity to the terminology and nobody was uh, disputing that there was only a refinement of that statement. Uh, now we are with, I don't, this is not I don't remember that discussion. Yeah, it's on the issue list. So, um, and now um, this is basically the opposite. Uh, also, entity is used um, uh, quite a lot throughout the document, apparently. I made a quick search, and it is uh, basically the founding stone of composite device, because it's an entity. And uh, I'm, I'm very surprised by this here right now, and I, in general, think we uh, already have decided against device. We need a bucket. We don't have to define it. That is clear. And uh, the, the general consensus, I thought, was entity. So. Uh, the proposal here was to use implementation. I would not uh, support that. It is not an implementation guidance we are hitting here for. It is an architectural concept, and it is about how multiple roles on the same, same thing uh, um, um, interact. 
basically it is important to understand that you uh, do not have internet protocols for that and that therefore sometimes if you send something to a relying party you're also sending it to the verifier because they are the same thing the same service on the other side so that is a uh, um, convergence of, of uh, content uh, and payload and therefore protocols and therefore design of the complete solution that is not an, a mere implementation guidance I think it's an architectural decision and therefore I would not go with the implementation part. Um, so I agree with about half of what you said and disagree with about half of what you said. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Please. Um, I, 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 uh, I agree with what you said about implementation. I disagree with what you said about entity. So, for example, when we had the composite discussion, we said we're not going to use the term composite entity, we're going to use the term composite device. And so I claim we do not have any consensus on using entity on anything um, other than maybe English layman's text in the middle of a sentence where nothing else works, uh, but not as any formal term in any sense. And so um, the issue that mentions entity and sub-entity is still open. It is not closed or anything like that. And so I claim that we do not have consensus on using entity, except for in layman text where it is the like to define other terms. I have no objection to that. But here, I don't like calling out entity in any formal sense, and I don't think it's necessary here. I think roles is perfectly fine here. Um, and as I mentioned, we have cases where we agreed to use device, such as in composite device, not composite entity. And so in some cases, the term device is perfectly fine for the word entity. In other cases, it's not. It depends on the context. That's what I mean by about half of what you said I agree with. Okay, I, I see a point. I don't need to, sorry, for directing. So I understand that entity is not loved. And uh, we might be uh, overstretching by uh, using that, overusing that. I agree with that. But I also do not like implementation. We do not a new bucket yeah. term. So and that's the part where I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the part I agree with you, yeah. What do, what do we yeah, think the really goal is for this section? Sorry? What do we think is the goal for that section? My personal point of view is it is the collapse collapsing roles has implication on architectural design. Um, for example, uh, there, I think I even highlighted an example here. So um, it's understand to, uh, how they are using internet protocols or not. And it is later on, we, we highlight, there was another issue somewhere that highlighted maybe we should uh, uh, make an example for all the arrows between the boxes, like uh, why suddenly is evidence sent from a, I don't know, relying party to a, uh, a tester? Isn't that weird? And uh, yes, because it's transitive, so far, so to speak. So we uh, elaborate all these little examples when the actual conceptual message is not relayed between the roles they're actually uh, source and target. So uh, that this has an impact on the protocols being used. And I understand that this is vital to, to solutions. So I was agreeing on that part. Yeah, maybe we should have a permutation example thing here that says, yeah, this is why evidence is not directly related to the uh, verifier because, and now you highlight why it's related here, uh, it's going to convey it here. So, uh, Coming back to this, this also come, uh, happens when roles collapse. So if you collapse a relying party and verifier role, like in a RIV, for example, then uh, suddenly uh, more things than typically are conveyed to the same thing. I don't know the better term now, formally entity. So uh, again, you might use the same protocol to do this. You might use two protocols in parallel uh, with the same thing now because it collapses roles. You do not know because solution decides that. Um, so uh, the important thing is to highlight that in the architecture, that there are multiple implications here if you bucket or multiple roles in the same uh, bucket. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, sometimes I think we should call it a bucket. And then uh, that is really the new term, I assume. And that is, that is a problem I want to address, the collapse and therefore the architectural and solution implications. So I don't disagree with your point of view. I'm just wondering, I'm trying to figure out, this is, a, this is a new section in front of topological models section, or is it, did we re, rename the section? I'm trying to get context in the, in the, no, form it's of not, the document. It's not, not, an ex, not a replacement, it is an addition to uh, um, topological models. It's an oak. Uh, 
So it's position before the topological models heading after the composite device section. I'd like to say yes, um, but I have to take that in my own I Look at, I don't know if the, if the uh, version of the, of the uh, PDF that I generated has all of it. Is this text all about when things get combined into the same device? I, I'm, I'm still confused by what this is trying to solve, which is Ned's point. And so I've been wondering that myself as I'm staring at the text here. Um, if this is all about what goes inside of a particular device, then the term implementation might actually be appropriate. You know, implementation guidance or implementation. Could be the same service. It could be the same uh, Docker uh, Kubernetes environment. It could be a, a set of VMs. It could be mm, virtual functions. It could be a lot of uh, TEs that are ne living next to each other. Um, so, no, it is not a device. Most certainly it is not. Well, it goes in the same device. Like, uh, it, it may be something that runs inside the same device, right? It's not the device itself, right? It's code, it's right? It's a multi balanced, multi, uh, so balanced uh, with, a, with a backbone synchronized uh, control plane uh, conglomerate of multiple devices. It is not a single device, no. Okay. It's not, it entity. it's not the same entity in your term either, right? You still have separate attester and verifier roles that are running potentially on different nodes. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not a change to the topological model. So I don't understand why we need to even bring it up. So, so right. So the second, the last, the second to the last paragraph in composite device section is essentially going down this path of explaining the relationship of roles to entities. It's almost, you know, it's almost a sidebar conversation or yeah, yeah, or some section. I agree with you, Ned. Am I still projecting? I'm still projecting this, right? Uh, yes, although I'm looking at my screen. I'll look back at yours, Michael. I just pulled up the document as, as it is to clarify where section 4.4 .4 is so everyone can see. Yeah. So it's... Uh, yes, that text that Michael's highlighting is the text that already says, I think, what I consider to be the main point. And I'm trying to figure out what is the gap in that. So it's a composite device. And this text is not about composite device only. It is about the general architectural structure that is a single gap. So uh, this can be solved by just entering, uh, inserting another uh, top level uh, uh, section here. Um, maybe some, I don't know, introduction text. And then uh, that would be okay. So, but we agreed on that there is a, a um, inconsistency in the terms used artifactual Artifacts in the in the in the text. Uh, that is, I think, role composition. There were only a very few occasions of that. I pruned those. Yeah, good. Then there is this concept here remaining that there is a something that can take on multiple roles. So I think the first two sentences yes, that you have highlighted, Michael, right? Because the the for example part is very specific to composite devices. So I think that this topic, the first two sentences, the and this topic belongs. Um, between section five and section six. <clears throat> yeah, done that one. That, yeah, the, that the, the pull request puts it there. Okay. No, it puts it in between no, no, four it and five. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I am sorry. That is an oversight on my part. That is not so smart. So you're going to redo this and you're going to move it further down. And then while you're at it, you'll just split this into sentences. My suggestion is that you start always start a new sentence on a new physical line. Yeah, I did this. This is addressed the... in the pull request. Okay, it happens <laughs> later. Okay. So, so you're looking at the one I commented on, not the current state. If you look uh, at the final, Okay, the current state, that. okay. That's why it says oh, outdated next to that. So, yeah, so, I got it now. Um, so I have, a, want to get people's feedback on section six on trust model. Uh, it's describing trust model in the context of the roles, but in in actuality, the trust model is between entities. Entities possess keys, roles don't. And that is a very good point. As an example I made, no, that is not true. Maybe roles have 
separate key materials because one role is residing in a DE and the other role is designing is residing in the REE and therefore they have different key material and are basically separated still on the same device. I think right, but in, in order for you in order for you to, in order for you to, <laughs> in order for you to communicate that thought you had to introduce two new entities, a TEE and a REE. And I would not think that is good. So the Those point are entities. Is, is that you can't talk about trust without talking about entities. Talk about separation between uh, execution environments, and that's fine. Or environments I, I, I would think on this one. Yeah. I, I think they are known by roles, and there's uh, implementation details as to how you implement those roles. But I think they're still properties of roles. Right. So maybe. Go ahead. Maybe we, so, so I, it's just, maybe I think this about a different it. Issue, right? You're, you're jumping to a different issue. Well, it's true. Yeah. Related. The point, I think the point is, is in order to, in order to have that thought that that's in this, uh, that's in this pull request, we, we, we have to, we have to, we have to sort of level set on the difference between a role and an entity and um maybe maybe we don't all agree but i th i think that that hank's perspective and my perspective are are similar in that w that we you know we see that the the roles and the entities are different things uh maybe that's not necessarily has to be true but <clears throat> if we are Philosophically diff differing, then I think the words aren't gonna we're we're gonna have these sort of disagreements in wording. Which to circle back to the initial issue, which is rather we talked about the soft. I'm so sorry. If you're not going to use device or entity, what, how, how do we explain to the reader how this composition thingy works that is just about the roles, not the role composition? Again, we also agreed not to use that. So, uh, the, I yeah, think it depends, on, it depends on the sentence of the context. In some cases, but not all cases, it would be correct to say within a device. In other cases, it might say in a particular implementation. And in other cases, uh, the term entity might be appropriate if used in a layman's term, not in any specific sense. Anyway, if you're trying to be as generic as possible. And so I think it depends on the sentence. But I think okay. uh, but the, the at, a, at a high level, what we're trying to accomplish there. And I think we have agreement on the original intent, although the original intent might be as simple as two sentences. And I don't know if we have agreement on anything more than those two sentences that was at the top of what Michael was highlighting before, uh, is it appearing between you know, five and six. That's the part that I think we got agreement on, right? Um, yeah. So, so we we agreed that there was a that the thought that that was in this pull request belongs between section five and section six. We agree that there's that there is a difference between um, something that we call role and and something that hosts the role or multiple roles. And that we want to have a conversation in in the architecture about the idea of be of of something I won't use the word entity can host multiple roles. Nicely worded, by the way. <laughs> so if that if we're if that makes sense, then maybe we should just take a try, you know, take a cut at it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a new high level section. Ned, do you want to take a cut at it? Uh, I can certainly give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think Hank needs to give me some final text and then I can drop yeah, it on right. you, you, can, you can work what, what is there and take my, I don't know, unrelinquishing comment into account. <laughs> you're, you're doing so well, Ned, you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so okay. okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay to, to just, uh, for the sake of process, uh, put this in and then immediately start a, this doesn't work because DR on this. 
So, uh, so but we but need to put it in the right spot. Do, do you want me to pull pull this out and put it into the right spot then? Yeah, do that. And I would say maybe make it a high level section for now. Just. I mean, the other thing that you can do, you can see it's in a separate branch, the Royal Composition branch. It could be that Ned, because that's a that's not a Hank fork, that's a branch, right? And so Hank, sorry, Ned could just contribute to and replace that branch. And if that happens, then this pull request automatically updates. Yep. That's why uh, Ned, you already have permission to update this pull request by uh, by uh, working out of the Royal Composition branch. Okay. Yep. This was Hank's fork, you couldn't do that. But in the, in the uh, Royal Composition branch, you can do that. Um, okay, so I'm just going to make it a top level first. That's what we want to do. Um, Rolls. I, I won't say for sure yes until I see it, but maybe. And it's going after topological models. Yep. Before trust model. And you are making it a top level for now. And so, and then Ned's going to head a kit, take a kick at the text. Yeah. And I'm going to try and do it in a way that the trust little section doesn't need to be rewritten. All right. So, uh, let's close that one. Pull request update trust model with implicit trust example. Oh, Jiri is not here. Jiri kept promising to do something with this. Um, yeah, it looks like it's still not ready. Adopt, someone want to adopt it? Is this something that someone else feels strongly about? I didn't really get it, to be honest. To be honest I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I understand Jiri's definition of implicit versus other other contexts well there are implicit trust relationships between evidence validity and attestation results validity that is the only thing that i can really understand but i don't see this here even so i don't know um in general i think everything everything should be explicit in some way, whether it's in endorsement, evidence, or policy. And so this idea of implicit attestation or implicit trust uh, is like a looking man for me. Um, yes. oh, oh, okay. I have, uh, I have so a comment, so I don't want to adopt it because I'm confused about what it should say. So if you look at my comment around 619, you'll see my top level comment about uh, how, what is it actually anchored to? And there's no text that actually says that in this, and I'm not sure how to write it. So that's why I'm not adopting it is because I don't know how to address my own comment in 619. I don't know what the intent would be. Yeah, but I, would, uh, uh, I ban... agree with that on the, go ahead. I wouldn't ban implicit here uh, because again, I think there are implicit trust relationships automatically always if we talk about the lifetime and validity of evidence, then another uh, then, then endorsements may, may also have a specific validity frame. So then again, the evidence and the attestation results are uh, implicitly only uh, trusted. Right. In the Venn diagram of explicit and implicit claims, there will always be something in the in the implicit claims, you know, circle, but our, the go overall goal is to reduce the size of that circle. Right? That's why we're here. It's because we want, we want the other circle that's, that's doing things explicitly to get bigger. 
Yeah, I think I, I agree with that. Sounds almost like we should put a diagram in the document. Now it occurs to me that ITF XML should include Venn diagrams as a primitive. I don't know what a diagram would be yet, so I don't agree or disagree. I don't know either. Exactly. That's why I'm thinking that it would help. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what is trying to be conveyed here. See. I think we're all a little bit confused on this one. I was offering my perspective on what I think implicit and explicit trust is about. And, and what he's trying to accomplish is he's trying to say that you don't need to like re-authenticate or re-provide information if you're already over some uh, channel that was established that already had that. But I don't know how to how that works because it seems like what you'd have is something that would be the equivalent of evidence and so that's what i'm trying to get at that i don't know how to what the intent is exactly so i think i don't, I don't we need to get um jerry's perspective i was offering mine but i don't think that we agree I don't know that we can do anything about this during this call here because I don't think we can assign it. sounds to me like we can't assign it to any of us because none of us are evangelists for this and understand it enough to, yeah, to say just, what we can uh, say. Okay. That's fine. Um, so, can I say something here? I think what's complicating the discussion of the trust model and the trust itself is that trying to capture a lot of specifics about relationships. Trust is really about a relationship and, and dare I say, entity, you know, between entities. Um, and it's a question of point of view. And we're trying to make one description of something that's capturing all the different point of views of where the trust needs to be. And fundamentally, it comes down to if you're the part that the, the entity that is requiring the trust of another entity, you have some basis of that trust. And mostly we're talking claims as establishing that basement of, uh, basis of trust. And if I trust somebody, I may need zero claims. If I trust them a little bit, I may need claims of, that have evidence. If I don't trust them at all, or I, I have tighter constraints on what I, I really need, I might need claims about claims about claims that eventually gets down to other kinds of ideas of things rooted in roots of trust or um, endorsements from somebody else, whatever those are, those are all essentially things to establish trust. And so each time you try to establish trust with a claim, you have to evaluate the trustworthiness of the claim itself, which may require other, thing, uh, other claims. And so maybe we should be thinking about uh, a discussion of trust where instead of saying, here's the one model of trust, it's really the, the perspective of whatever entity we're talking about and what it needs to trust. Is that, so is that a comment on the trust model section or just more? I, I've been thinking about if it, it, it I, I don't have a lot of problem with the things the trust model section is, so I'm not really saying let's replace the trust model section with an abstract discussion on point of view of trust and claims about claims. I'm just saying that I, I think that if we were clear about what we mean by trust, the complication of writing these other uh, sections may be a little easier. <clears throat> so uh, I didn't disagree with what you just said. From a perspective, so the, yeah. as an example, the the implicit tr this, uh, trust discussion that could happen from any of the point of views that we're talking about. It could happen at the verifier or at the relying party. It, it even happens when you talk about the attesters and and how do you um, rely on the fact that a a tester has done its job properly? 
and, and if you're really paranoid, you may not decide to um, uh, trust anything unless you have some evidence about the, the measure itself. On the other hand, if you're the attester, you may not decide to participate unless you have some evidence about the trustworthiness of the verifier or um, the relying parties that you're doing. And so there's, there's room for mutual access stations maybe that fall out of that model of trust. So, so, and I think, I think we are currently using the appraisal policy as the bucket to resolve all of those ambiguities. Yeah, but that, but that's not that's not sufficient because that really happens at at one particular entity where the appraisal policy happens. So, if you're the attester, you also have an attesting policy that says, "Should I participate in this at all?" Right. That, um, that that's when you are acting as a relying party for a different communication. So in other words, the I mean, there's, there's yeah. lots of different scenarios that you might describe that. So whenever you're participating in any of the actions involved, that when we talk about the different things, you have some notion about should I trust the other party, and you're right. your so, action on that. So we we do we have a section on privacy considerations. Privacy is a, is a good example of one reason why you might have a policy that says I don't want to play in this um, exchange because I have some privacy concerns exactly so that's that's often the case for the bilateral trust you know situations is is was one entity has privacy considerations and the other one has security considerations and they're at odds right so you have to negotiate the trust but, but the, the, the the core thing that relates to architecture here is that there's a policy for every entity that they're doing sometimes that policy is implicit they'll just do whatever they're told or they will uh, not even consider it. Other times, there's decisions that need to be made in that entity about how they're going to participate or if participate at all. So early on, the privacy we, consideration section right now, but it doesn't make that particular point. I think that would be fine to uh, add as another sentence or paragraph into that section. So. Right. So er, in the very early um, revisions of the architecture, there we had sections around. What would what would we think of as classic, um, you know, tr um, tr you know, trust policy, uh, trust anchor management kinds of considerations? And at the time, people were saying, "Well, we're not trying to kind of reinvent that. That's sort of you know, that's existing. Everybody understands it. It's we're not trying to sort of reinvent it, but it does play a role." The new part about that is is that. When mechanisms have been employed, so let's talk about access control mechanisms in, in a system. If you're a um, trying to do an appraisal about a system, the fact that it's a certain kind of system that has, for instance, the ability to enforce a mandatory access control policy might be an important thing to consider about should I trust that machine or that entity. Um, and it might go further than that. I might need claims about not just is it a machine capable of doing that, but what is it actually enforcing it right now, or is it um, uh, enforcing a particular policy that's relevant to the thing that we're trying to establish here? So I need to drop off soon, but uh, I'm willing to take a shot at adding information into the privacy consideration section to make the point that uh, I think Peter and Ned were just discussing. Okay. The the one that says uh, you know the a tester may need to have infant like mutual attestation stuff so that it says I only want to give my evidence to uh, a verifier that I know is uh, trusted because it contains sensitive information so I'm fine uh, taking the action item to to suggest such text in a separate PR. Okay. okay. But I gotta get the drop off. I think we're all done. I think we we've beat the three issues to debt to <laughs> down. So that's good. And I sent an email to Jiri asking him if he could join us or clarify. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next week. Oh, there was a so question. Goodbye. <laughs>